Hello and welcome. My name is Melody from MelodyCrochet.com. Today we are going to be crocheting this adorable newborn-sized caterpillar cocoon set. It comes with the hat and the cocoon. Please subscribe to my YouTube channel and like me on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter for patterns, reviews, and my weekly craft cast. Now all of your yarn choices will be linked below if you're curious. But, in case you have anything else that you'd like to use, any worsted weight size 4 acrylic will be fine. You're going to need a dark, a medium, and a light green, a bright red, and a scrap of a soft yellow and chocolate brown. Let's clear this out of the way and talk about hooks. Now, I'm using a size I hook and a size F hook. Let me get these out of here. This is my tulip set, also linked below. But if you're expecting a smaller or a larger than average baby, feel free to just go up or down one hook size because that will serve you better than actually trying to maneuver with the numbers. You're going to need a tape measure to make sure that you're in a good size range as well as a needle and scissors to work in the ends at the end. So go ahead and get everything out that you're going to need and let's get started. Alrighty, in a magic circle, chain two. We're going to not count that as a stitch. We're going to half double crochet nine times into our magic circle. I like to work over the double length of my magic circle. Feel free to do whatever you feel most comfortable with. There's four, five, six, and nine. Now we're going to cinch this closed and slip stitch into the top of the first half double crochet of this row and that will complete row one. After this we're going to only chain up one in between each stitch row and now we increase in each of the nine half double crochets. So right at the base of that chain one, you're going to increase. So two half double crochets go into the same stitch. One and two, right by each other. And you're gonna repeat that eight more times for row two. So half double crochet one and two. And again, and I'll meet you at the end of this row Okay, we're going to slip stitch the top of the first half double crochet, chain up one, a little snugging, there we go, I like to cinch that closed, chain up one, and for row three we're going to half double crochet, increase at the base of your chain one, followed by a half double crochet all by itself, right there, okay, and repeat that increase and then a half double crochet all by itself. Here we are at the end of the row and at the end of row oh there we go awesome at the end of row three you're going to have 27 half double crochets so you chain one half double crochet increase at the first stitch at the base of that chain one, followed by half double crochet by itself, and another half double crochet. And that's our pattern for, <laughs> for row four. One more time, increase, followed by two stitches all by themselves. And just do that all the way across. I'll meet you at the end. By the end of row four, you're gonna have 36 stitches. So go ahead and count if you need to, and then slip stitch into the top of the first half double crochet, chain up one, and for row five, the pattern is increase, followed by three half double crochets all by themselves. One, there's two, and three. And again, half double crochet increase, One, two, and three. Continue this across. You'll have 45 stitches at the end of this half double crochet row. 
slip stitch into the top of the first half double crochet of this row and chain up one to get ready for row six. Row six, you're going to half double crochet increase for the first stitch at the base of the chain one. Then one, two, three, four, all by themselves. Here's another increase, followed by four half double crochets all by themselves. And you're going to repeat that across. One more here, slip stitch into the top of the first half double crochet of this row, chain one, and half double crochet increase to start off row seven. Now you're going to follow that with five half double crochets all by themselves. So one, two, three, four, and five. Let's do that one more time together. Half double crochet two times in the same stitch for an increase. One and two. And then five half double crochets all by themselves. At the end of this row, you're going to have 63 stitches, which is wide as we are going for this baby cocoon. I will meet you at the end of this row. We'll slip stitch right at the top of that first half double crochet chain up one, and let's take a look. Now this is as big as our circle's getting. After this, it's all home free, just striping and fun. So we're going to get ready to start row eight. Row eight, you're just going to work those 63 stitches, each get one half double crochet across, but do work at the base of that chain one, just to eliminate any gaps, and one half double crochet in each stitch across. Feel free to count. I usually lose or gain one, which works fine because we're going to need to end with an even number anyway. <laughs> but I make an effort to make sure that I am, if nothing else, consistent. So here we are at the end of our first half double crochet around. So we're ending row eight. Slip stitch at the top of the first half double crochet again. Chain up for one. And you're going to do that again four more times. So all the way through row 12. Now here we are. We're ending row 12. We did half double crochet around for the last five rows. And I'm going to go through the slip stitch and then fasten off completely. Our stripes are just too thick to carry the yarn up. So we're going to prepare for row 13. Completely fasten off. I do not weave in my tails. I work over my tails for this. It makes it so much easier. But let's measure first, just to make sure we're in the area. Now you could see mine's measuring about 10 to 11 inches. That's going to change only slightly as we work our way up from here. So that is a perfect range. Hopefully you're in the 10 to 11 inch range across also. So slip knot, attach your spring green. This is my medium shade of green. You want to attach just before or just after your seam. Chain up for one. Half double crochet in the same stitch that you just chained up from. Working over those tails. I'm really careful at the beginning. I want to work over these tails. It saves so much time later. And oop, there we go. This spring green is just a little splittier and just a little bit thinner, even though it's the same brand, it's just a little bit thinner than the Patty's green that we were working with prior. So it's here we are at the end of, of the row. Coordinated. Awesome. Half double crochet in awesome. that last stitch. Now that should be work 63. All the way across with this half then you're double going crochet to slip stitch into the top of the very stitches. first half double crochet. And I will see you at the end one, of row 13. Half double crochet at the base once again, and you're going to repeat this for four rows total of spring green. Now here we are at the end, just finishing up before our color change. We're going to be going to the honeydew color. I was fortunate enough to find honeydew in my stash. I thought I was going to have to replace it with mint from I Love This Yarn, which is a wonderful yarn, but it would be a different yarn and I really like to be consistent. Slip stitch, 
fast enough completely. Once again, we're going to be working over those tails. Do not worry about fast about weaving these in. Alrighty, since we attached right before the seam last time, I'm going to attach right after the seam. I don't want that seam moving around too much. I could see a seam and crochet like a sore thumb, so I try to avoid it moving around too much, especially for newborn photography. Everything's so little to begin with. So attach your honeydew or your lightest green. Chain one, half double crochet at the base of that chain one and across for 63 half double crochet stitches. Now we are going to be doing four of these rows in the lightest green. So that's gonna be row 17 through 21. And I will see you at the end of those four rows and we will fasten off and change colors together one more time. Snip. And let's attach that Patty's green again. So here's back to your darkest green which is gonna be for rows 22 to 25. Attach, chain one. Oh, I feel how thick that is compared to the honeydew. Patty's green is just a really thick color. Some colors are just thicker than others. <laughs> so I've attached right before the seam. <clears throat> Once again, chain one, half double crochet across, and you're gonna keep on going. Let's go ahead and finish up our color work. We're going to go back to spring green for row 26 to 29, then honeydew for the last four rows of row 30 to 33. And here we are finishing off that row 33 slip stitch. No color jog, fasten off completely. Go ahead and snip. And now we're going to be attaching the dark green. So grab your Patty's green if that's what you're using. Attach just before the seam. Chain two, since we're gonna be working in double crochets for the rest of the pattern. Double crochet at the base. This time, that chain two is going to count as a stitch because while we're working with 63, we need an even number of stitches at the end of this row. So count back if you have any fudging to do. If you ended up with 62 or 64, just don't use that chain two as a stitch. But all we have to do is make sure that whether you use or don't use that chain two as a stitch, that you have an even number of stitches. So I'm going to be using not that chain two because I ended up with 62 stitches somehow. So I'm going to be slip stitching over the first stitch that I am using, which is going to be the first double crochet. If you have an odd number, then you are going to be slip stitching at the top of your chain two and using it as a stitch. I hope that made sense. But here we go. Slip stitch into the top of the stitch you'll be using. Chain two. And we're going to do our first back post I'm sorry, front post, double crochet. So that's the post and double crochet around it. Instead of going under the V that we usually work around, we are making this stitch around the entire post of your previous row. So just as far as the anatomy, that's the post down there. And you're working back and forth. So you're double crocheting around the post right there. So we yarn over, go around that post, and do a double crochet. And for the back one, there's the post again, but we have to work from behind. So back post double crochet is from behind. Now we've worked our way to the end. We need to end on a back post double crochet because this is going to give it kind of a ribbed look and it's going to cinch it in just a little bit. It's super cute. So here's our last stitch. We're gonna do a back post around this, back post double crochet, and then we're going to slip stitch at the top of the very first stitch of this row, which was a front post double crochet. Right there. Chain two. Let's take a look here. Let's secure this first. 
close that up a little bit. Now see the little ribbing that you've created? It's really cute, isn't it? I think it adds just a bit of texture to it. It's really nice at the top of just working half double crochets all the way above. So let's finish this off. Half to, you're going to double crochet front post around that last row's front post double crochet. And the ones that were a back post double crochet, you are going to back post double crochet again. That will continue on that rib look. You have to find it a little bit, but make sure you're working around the previous row's post and not the one below that. There it is. So we're going to work front post and then here's a back post. And this is your last row. And there's a back post, double crochet. And we're at the end of the row. slip stitch into the top of the first double crochet of this row, admire your work, and fasten off. Go ahead and weave in all your ends if you need to. I'm fastening off, then we're going to attach a needle. Got a little out of frame, there we go. I just work my way up and down. These rib stitches are so forgiving. You can't see anything in there. <laughs> and snip. Perfect. Flip it on inside out. Oh, so cute. And then find all of those stitches that you worked over and just pull them taut. Don't pull them crazy tight. But first, let's go ahead and do the magic circle. I like to thread and then reinforce the magic circle. I'll go around two, three times if given the chance. I didn't want to bore you too much, so I just went around two times. Then at the end, I go the opposite direction on the prior row. Really locks it in there. I've never had one come undone yet. Okay, now here we are. Um, I don't want you to pull until you cinch, but pull out the slack. From those stitches that you worked over. See how they kind of lay flat? You don't want any bunching underneath there. That's not cute. And then snip. Oh, nothing better than not having to weave in. Now let's make a grab your red yarn and your eye hook and let's get started. Now we're going to do a magic circle. So just form that however you do. I'm going to chain up for one. And then half double crochet nine times around. Nine, eight, two. And one more. There we go. That was fidgety. <laughs> okay, we're cinching closed, slip stitching onto the top of the first half double crochet of the row, that chain one is not counting. Chain up for one. Red is another one of those thicker colors in Red Heart Super Saver, at least cherry red is. You're going to increase all the way across, so that's going to be nine increase half double crochets, so two and then two half double crochets in the next stitch. And again, all the way across. I'll meet you at the end of this row. Okay, we're gonna double count just to make sure, slip stitch into the top of the first half double crochet. I give a little cinch on that magic circle. Chain one, half double crochet increase at the base of your chain one. Followed by, for chain for row three, we're going to do half double crochet increase, followed by a single half double crochet. And all the way across, so there's an increase, and a single half double crochet. Meet you at the end of this row. We'll have 27 stitches. 
slip stitch at the top of the row, and we are going to do half double crochet, one at each stitch all the way around. This is going to give you a bit more of a rounder hat. We're not done with increases, we still have another row of increasing after this. But this is just going to round it a bit. See how it kind of made it a cup? That's exactly what we're looking for. So that's why you did just one half double crochet all the way around for 27 stitches. We've slip stitched at the top of the first half double crochet of the row, chained one, and now we're going to get back to increasing for one more row. So half double crochet increase, followed by one and two half double crochets all by themselves, and again increase, followed by two half double crochets all the way across. That's your pattern. We're going to finish that off with 36 stitches, slip stitch at the top of the first half double crochet. And for me, I'm done. If you're expecting a larger baby head, feel free to increase to 40, I'm sorry, to 45 stitches. That would just be half double crochet increase followed by three half double crochets. It won't make a big difference at the end, but this is a pretty good size hat. This is going to fit most newborns. So, as it were, we're half double crocheting around until you hit... There we go, 15 rows total. Forgive me, 14 rows total and half double crochet. And that's what we've done. We've, double cro we've half double crocheted all the way across, slip stitched into the top of the first half double crochet and chained one. Now we are hitting row 15. And for this, let me show you what happens here. It's a very stretchy stitch. So we're gonna measure and we want a newborn size hat. Now, again, instead of increasing to 45 stitches, you could just keep it this way. This is super stretchy. Now that is much bigger than I would typically want a newborn size hat. That's going to be 14 inches around. So I like to give it a little lip. It'll give us a little bit more length. And we're going to single crochet around. And watch how different this is. Just with one row of single crochets around. It gives it so much structure. So I chained one, single crochet one time in each row. I'm sorry, single crochet one time in each stitch. And now I've come to the end. Slip stitch into the first single crochet of the row. Chain one and fasten off. If you need more length, feel free to keep on going with that single crochet for three, four rows. It looks really cute, but this is perfect for the average newborn baby. And look how much that brought it in. That's an entire inch. It gave it so much structure. Now snip and weave in your ends and such. Where's my scissors? Here they go. And we're done. Let's add the eyes. So first I like to figure out where everything's going to be. And then I use my little snips of yarn to mark them. So just going off what I like to see based on pictures of the caterpillar, I'm going to place. And I like to keep in mind where the little baby eyes are going to be. Because they're um, this hat's going to go all the way around their head. Their head is mostly hair. Their eyes are very close together. You don't want to be right on top of the baby's eyes. That's, that's a little odd looking, I found. So we're going to be a little wider than the baby's eyes. And then I just use these stitches to make sure I'm about the same place on each one. You can move it. This is making them a little too close set for my taste. There we go. I'll end up widening that a bit. Okay, I let's always set that do. aside for a moment and start making some eyes. Grab your yellow yarn and your smaller F hook. We're going to make a magic circle. There we go, around. Twist and pull up for one chain. We're going to do six single crochets around. There's, nope, nope, I'm in half double crochet mode. Single crochets. <laughs> six single crochets around. One, two, three, four, five, and six. There 
you go. Cinch that closed. Feel free. Now, if you're having a hard time getting your stitches small, don't pull tighter. Use a smaller hook. You can go down to a D hook with this. The yarn is so bulky, it's not going to let you make it any smaller than it needs to be. An F hook works just fine for me, but never struggle with making your stitches smaller. Just go to a smaller hook. That's what they're for, right? So we're going to chain one and we're going to put two single crochets in each stitch around until we have 12. You'll notice a little bit of puckering while everything laid flat with the eye hook. Things are not going to behave as well with a smaller hook because this yarn was meant for a bigger hook. So don't be surprised if you see puckering and stuff. It's okay. There we go. Cinch that closed. Fasten off all the way. Snip the yarn. Leave some tails if you'd like. I use the green yarn to sew these on so I don't worry about a long tail here. Now you're going to attach your medium green with your F hook anywhere on your little yellow circle. Slip stitch on, chain one. Ooh, little fiddly. And then single crochet, increase at the base of your chain one. Now you're going to single crochet, then single crochet increase, followed by a single crochet. That's your pattern. All the way around, you should end up with 18 single crochets. If you notice a gap, feel free to fill it in with an extra. This is purely aesthetic, not for a fit. It's not going to grow any bigger, so filling it in so that the color doesn't gap is perfectly fine. Then, nope, I see a little gap right there. There we go and slip stitch into the first single crochet of the row. Fasten off, leave a nice long tail because this is what I sew it on with. And then make another eye. And now some antenna. A lot of people had some challenges with the antenna. Um, you're going to make a slip knot, use your F hook, chain 10, eight, nine, and 10. Then you're going to slip stitch in three stitches from the hook. So skip three, slip stitch in. I'm just gonna show you one more time. Right there, just slip stitch in. There we go. And now you're going to slip stitch across, so keep on going. So you should have about six stitches still open. There's one, slip stitch in, all the way down. It just makes it a little bit sturdier, a little bit thicker for the antenna and gives you a strand to tie it on with in a minute, so it works well. Even after a washing, if you use the Red Heart Super Saver, these guys really stand up and they're very, how would you say, moldable. It's nice. One more. Awesome. Now you're going to chain one, fasten off, leave yourself a little bit of a tail, you don't need much, and make another antenna. So, he's so cute. <laughs> Alrighty, get your second one made. And let's attach them. Now, what I'm going to do is decide where I want them. Then I'm going to get two pieces of scrap yarn. Now I usually like them about three rows down from center, not quite on the very far outside, slightly one stitch forward. Right there. And I'll mark that with some scrap yarn. Make sure the other one is on the same place. Bring it all the way through. It's important. Okay, now grab your antenna. Put it right over the marker you just chose. Forgive me, I worked off frame just a moment there. I'll be right back. There we go. I inserted my hook from the inside and came out the hole that I have marked for the antenna. Now I'm going to do that again through the other hole. So there's two holes. You've marked, since it went all the way through, 
you marked basically two places. And you were sending one strand in one hole and the other brown strand through the other hole. See? Oops. <laughs> Come on out of there. There we go. And now remove your marker. And you are going to do a triple knot. So one over the other. Ooh, we have some splitting. One over the other and tie one, two, and here's the permanent maker right there. It's on forever. Snip about half an inch, three quarters of an inch away, and you're done. Go ahead and do that with the other side too. And we are all set. Aren't they cute? Oh my gosh. They're so moldable. Gotta love acrylic, right? Let's sew on some eyes. Some people are very intimidated by this. I'm going to go through the wide holes because, like I said, it's coming out one place, it's going out the other. Make sure you use the same hole. Um, that's the middle strand of my magic loop right there. So that is the very center of the eye. And I put it through my marked stitch. Now we're going to sew on. I do not sew a lot. I'll probably go in and out six places for the entire eye. This is a baby hat. It's not going to get a lot of jostling. We don't want puckering. I've never had one come apart and it looks a lot better after washing if you don't have an insert and an exit all over. There are better ways to attach your eyes, I'm sure, but this works so well for newborn hats that I just go with it. Plus, if you decide to change your mind about where it is, pretty easy to change. we go. I'm getting excited. We're really close to done. See, I'm just going it. It's basically a really wide basting stitch. If your yarn comes off, you just put your needle where you want it to go and then thread it. That way you don't have to worry about like sending it through. Hopefully that makes sense. Go inside, tie it to that center strand that you sent through for placement. I do a triple again. Weave in your ends once you're done here. I don't show that, but we do do it. And I made it a triple. And there we are. Attach your other eye and you are all set. How cute is that and so easy? Please like and subscribe on my social media. Everything is linked below. If you have any questions or comments, please share them. Thank you so much for stopping by and I hope you have a great day. See you next time.